Hello, Father. Aren't they down yet? No. They're just coming. Oh, it's like that, is it? It was Sunday. Ah, lose a day and you lose a friend. Uh, I've got nothing else to lose. <laughs> Sip the socks. They've gone again. After you'd wrap them round your neck of the night, you'd know where to find them. You'll be getting a sock from Dad soon if you don't hurry up. Ha, ha, ha. Funny, aren't you? Hold on, Mother. Don't drown me. I'll to sieve this. There's enough coal on your back to last us a week. Oh, they're scaring. I don't hear them. Don't worry. They'll be down in a minute. Where's yon brush? Gee, what a fuss box you are. I say so. Do you think I could ask him today? Oh, you've got a tongue in your head, haven't you? Would you ask him for me? What, and him only just home from work? Oh, not likely. Well, I'm sick of putting it off. All right, Dad, we're coming. I dare you to ask him this morning. Come on. Morning, Dad. Morning, Dad. Morning, Mum. More like afternoon to me. Oh, I'll give over, Dad. When I was your age. I know. What was a lark? Why don't you ask him now? No, he's in a bad mood. Do it this afternoon. Oh, I don't want to sit down. Do it now. Oh. What's the matter with thee? Well, eh, uh, nothing, father. Well, get on with your breakfast, then, and you'll be late for your work. Five years I've been at Marlowe's now, you know, Dad. Well, what about it? Oh, nothing, only I, uh... What are you driving at? Well, I was just wondering when I was going to get that there new suit. That's all. Hey, lad, what can we do? You know, we haven't got much coming in. I know, Ma, but I've never had a proper suit yet. Me nearly 18. Well, I'm ashamed to go out of Sundays. Look at Jet Lindsay and others they can have them. Why can't I? They get them at the Good Samaritan Clothing Club, Barry. And you know your father doesn't like weekly payments. You'll have to make do with what you've got, lad. You'll get one when things book up. When things book up. Huh? It's all very well talking like that trade's turning corner. Paper says so. I don't know. I'm ashamed to turn corner in these trousers. Do they have suits to a good Samaritan? Why can't I? I'll tell you why. Because I'm not shoving no blasted millstone of weekly payments around my neck. What we can't pay for cash down, we'll do without, see? But here am I working full time and no close to go out on weekends. Ah, lad, I've worked all my blooming life. And what have I got? Well, I don't see that just because you... Now then, don't set me off now. Don't set me off. Now, Harry, now, Harry. But I'm sick of it all, I can tell you. Nothing to wear and nothing to spend and me working full time. Man's work, that's what I'm doing. And giving up all I earn except for a shilling to spend. God almighty. What a life this is. I come home to rest and what do I get? If it's just you, it's so. Man, do you think blasted money grows on trees? Go on, get up to your work, the both of you. The lad's right, you know, Henry. He isn't fit to be seen in the street. Do you think I don't know? But it's not my fault. I've worked every hour that God sent, every day of my life. And what have we got to show for it? We're worse off now than when we was first wed. Well. Couldn't we manage it somehow? You know how you used to feel yourself. He can't go out of Sundays at all. I've told you, Mother, I'm having no weekly payments. We've managed to keep our heads above water so far. Do you think I want to see you going off every Monday morning to pawn shop like old man Nuttle? No, not if I can help it. 
Especially in one so young, with the handkerchief. Roll the nose. And tell the customers we can do with less noise. First, who does all the pawning for our neighbours? And who earns our commission, too, out of folks what's too high and mighty to come for themselves? We'll start with that one, Jack Cranford's best suit. She couldn't come this week, she's expecting a seventh. And him only working three days a week. That explains it. Certain fans work, you know. Oh. I should have brought my bed. Let me do this, Mrs. Mattel. It's only my lodger's suit. I don't see why I should hang up there doing nobody any good. He doesn't believe in pawn shops. He doesn't believe in obliging his landlady. Blast him. It's in the pocket. It's very cold this morning, isn't it? Do you know, I didn't sleep a wink last night with me cough. Wish to God they were open. I see performance. I see just slip your old age pension book into pocket. Mm, well, it doesn't do to tell everybody all you know, does it? A still tongue and a wise head. Wise as a serpent and innocent as a dove, as the good book says. I least said soonest mended, Mrs. Dorwell. Though I never knew he took pension books in pawn. Being against laws, he's printed on book. And him being a magistrate and a church goer. Though I'm surprised that now what nobody does, be what they may. Well, he knows if he takes your pension book in pawn, you can't draw your pension to the book is redeemed. Of course, if you can't afford to get your clothes out of pawn, you can always stay at home. But you can't afford to lose ten shillings a week for the sake of half a crown, can you? That's what he lends on pension books. That'll be interesting to some of my customers, Mrs. Dorbell. And thank you for the hint and the information. Indeed, you're welcome. I suppose you haven't got a drop of anything in the house. I must get something for me cough. You know my motto, neighbours obliged. Make yourself at home. The usual. Drop of hot water? No. Now, about that there Irish sweepstake ticket, Nancy. Have you decided yet? Not yet. I want to have a talk with a certain party I know. Who's that? It's only me. And me. Come in. I've been a quick eh? Couldn't wait for us, could you? Sit down. What'll it be? Three penneth. Ah, somebody's been doing themselves well. Bottle was nearly full yesterday. So was my old man. I don't know where he gets his money from. Now, Mrs. Bull, three penneth, you said? Ah, I look sharp about it. My throat's nearly cut. You can muck it six penneth if you'll trust me for the other threepence. 
Can't afford it, Mrs. Bull. Get out of way, will you? Some folks know to make money. Agent for Good Samaritan, pawning for neighbours. Neighbours obliged, did, with two lines under it, and selling nips. For up and please, Mrs. Bull. Now, what about you, Alice? Same for me, dearie. Well, girls, how are we all this morning, eh? Here, have a pinch of bird's eye. What? I don't know what's coming over folks these days. Why, what's up now? Well, I remember when there's hardly a day passed without a confinement or a laying out to be done. Ah, young uns aren't having children as they ought. And folks that die is being laid out by them as they belong to, which weren't considered respectably in the old days. I tell you, if me poor old mother was alive to see the goings on in the world of today, she'd turn in her grave so she would. Ah, the world's never been the same since the old queen died. Which queen do you mean, Mrs. Jike? Well, Queen Victoria, of course. Oh, eh. Uh. Who's that? Glasses. It's Mrs. Ardcastle. Come in. This is a surprise. Gee, I didn't know you had company, Mrs. Nettle. Nay, yeah, lass, we're all friends here. Sit down. Well, I don't want to disturb you. I'll come again when you're not busy. I'm in no hurry. Oh, I'm not busy, just having a quiet five minutes. Sit you down. Now, what is it you want? Well, Mrs. Nettle, our Harry wants a new suit. Oh, you mean you want a club check? That's easy settled. How much do you want it for, Mrs. Ardcastle? Well, he did say as how he wanted it made to measure. Made to measure, eh? Sounds as though he'd started courting. <laughs> Then his troubles begin. <laughs> He'll get it for three pounds, Mrs. Ardcastle. That's what I had to pay for my old men's. There'll be three shillings interest, Mrs. Ardcastle. You pay that now. And it's three shillings a week for 20 weeks. You understand? Aye. My husband will be a good payer. He doesn't believe in checks and weekly payments. Eee, what a job I had talking him into it. Obstinate as a mule. You see, he isn't comfortable or in debts. But what are you to do? Children are growing up. It's time your Sally was getting married, isn't it? There's enough fellas got their eye on her. It's Sam Grundy, for instance. Bah, he's got plenty of brass. Uh, I wouldn't like to think of our Sally having anything to do with a man like that. Aren't you worried, Mrs. Ardcastle? That girl of yours will do all right for herself. You'll see. She's had strong lasses, our Sal. And she's got a mind of her own. I do wish I could get her settled with some nice young man. <laughs> Sorry, Ned, there's no more credit. What do you mean? Them's my orders. It's now to do with me. Short time's been started at some at works already, and nobody knows who's going to be next. Yeah. What's that got to do with it? You'll get your money. I'm only doing as I've been told. I hear around you is the price we have to pay for that system, and we go on paying for it until we realize that the remedy is in our own hands. For many years now, we and our fathers before us have... What's the idea to keeping me waiting? ...worked steadily and laboriously. Oh, it's you. I thought we was going jazzing tonight. Why did you come into the pub and tell me you were there? I suppose you're more interested in listening to the monkey's mouth. Who are you talking to now? You kept me waiting. Aye, in a fine place she was waiting in, too. Ah, Queen of Sheba, eh? I can get girls ten a penny, and them as don't keep a fella waiting neither. And do you understand? I'll get a sick of trailing you around. And all for nothing. You're a dirty dog, Narky. You're not the only one as is sick. I'm sick of you and the rest of the crowd you blow around with. Well, the best thing you can do is to get them as is ten a penny. Now, come on, Sal, I was only kidding. Well, I wasn't. All right. Suit yourself? Perhaps you've seen her listen to his blather. Look at our lives and the lives of our parents and their parents. Never-ending labor. Constant struggle to pay the rent and to buy food and clothing. Now, we don't set the blame on any one section of the community. We challenge the system alone, which sets man against man and robs all of security. Now, in every industrial city in the land, you'll find places like this, where people like us who do the work of the world are forced to spend their days. 
And it'll go on like this until we people realize that society has the, the means and the knowledge to allow us to become men and women in the true sense of those words. Good night, boys. Good night, boys. Well, Jim, where do we go from here? Crosskey Lane. And I hope we don't waste as much breath down there as we've wasted here, then. Right. Yes, madam. You stop wasting your breath and get packing. Well, Sally, have I made a convert? Oh, I heard you speaking. Well, what did you think of it? Oh, I like the way you talk. You can talk all right. Oh, I don't know much about politics. It's the first time I've ever listened. Ah, that's the trouble. Talking doesn't seem to do much good. Do you always do this sort of thing in your spare time? I mean, don't you ever go out jazzing or enjoying yourself? Oh, I enjoy doing this. Though I like to get away sometimes, though. Aye, but you need money to get away. There's not many get out of Anchor Park except through cemetery gates. And even that costs you money. No, but where do you go? Well, there's Sunday rambles into the country. A lot of young folks go, you know, from Labour Club. Why don't you come with us sometime? Oh, I'd like that. Oh, but you go, don't you? I mean, I don't know anybody there. Oh, I, I'd, I'd like to take you. Funny, isn't it? What? Well, I mean, uh, us living so near and uh, this sort of first time we've spoke. Ah, uh. oh, come on. How much longer are you going to be? All right, I'm coming. I've got to go now. But I shan't forget. Next time there's a Sunday outing, I'll let you know. Good night, Sally. What's up with you all? What's up? Take a look at that. Put us on three days a week. Trade was turning cold. Hey, Harry, let's have a look at you. Oh, very good stuff, ma'am. He all pinching. Look at muscles in his oh, shoulders. Stop mucking me about. I lad, you look lovely. Turn round and let's have a proper look at you. I say, Sal. Doesn't he look a masher? Aye, he does. Come on now, our Harry. Upstairs with you and take it off before your pa comes home. Take it off? What do you mean, ma'am? I've only just put it on. Aye, and had a bath too. And who's this? <laughs> I suppose he won't recognize us in straight now. Your dad. Where are you going? Oh, need you ask? Swanking in front of Ellen Hawkins. Well, it suits for Sundays, remember, and not for gallivanting about in during week. Remember, it's not paid for. And be careful where you sit down in it. Look lovely. <laughs> Need to measure. It's not in pockets yet. Never mind, Harry. It soon will be. Hello, Harry. Hello, Jim. I uh, 
happy, Eddie? Yeah, I am. Would you rather be here with me than with the street corner lads? Would you? No, I'm not going with them no more. It troubles me, though, having had to spend on you, Ellen. There's many a time I'd like to... Oh, I want to do things. What sort of things? Big things. Gosh, I, I wish I was a boxer or a footballer or something. I'll get some money one of these days. You'll see if I don't. You wouldn't do anything wrong, would you, Harry? No, of course not. What then? Well, I'm having a threatening treble every week with Sam Grundy. Ooh, what we could do with. I want nothing, Harry. Only you. Just let me get hold of some money and I'll show you. that train. I've never been on one in my life. Neither have I. Well, Sal. There it is. Oh, I never knew anywhere could be so lovely. Why, oh, it doesn't seem as though this and Anki Park can be in the same world. Look. What is it? It's a hawk. It'll swoop in a minute, you watch. Yeah, what did I tell you? It's after a rabbit or something. Well, how could it see a rabbit from right up there in the sky? I don't know, but it can. Oh, and Sal, let's sit down. What are you thinking? Oh, just daft thoughts. All right, tell me. Oh, I was just thinking. It's all so lovely up here. Makes you see things different. Makes you never want to go back home. Uh, think of all those poor people in Hanky Park. The trouble is, they never get a chance to see how good life can be. Ah, uh, then they never learn. I wish I knew more about things like that. About people like us, living like we do and wanting better things. You know, nice houses and a steady job. Why can't we have them? Oh, what are you laughing at? No, I don't know. I can't explain. Oh, I don't look so sad, so. Oh, it's all this, Larry. Makes me feel sort of sad. Why? Well, I suppose if you've lived in a place that's... Ugly all your life, things that are beautiful seem out of reach. And then we get to thinking they're too good for us. That's the trouble. That's what we've got to fight. I wish I could help. You can, sir. And you must. If only everybody'd lend a hand. <laughs> Well, Sal, here we are. All good things come to an end. Hey, Larry, I never enjoyed myself so much in all my life. Well, there's plenty more days. Well, good night, Larry. And thanks again. Good night, Sal. Hello, Mum. I thought you'd have been back earlier than this, Sal, love. Mm-hmm. I've kept a bit of supper for you. Oh, thanks. Did you have a good day? Aye. Nice folk go on them rambles, don't they? Aye. He's a nice young man, is Mr. Meath. I do like him, I do. Do you really, Ma? I do. I reckon he's a gentleman and a credit to the neighbourhood. Now, read what folks say about labour men. Aye, Ma, we had a grand time. 
All the mountains' eyes you never saw. And he knows names of all birds. Oh, well, isn't that nice now? No, I don't see it's much use knowing the name of all birds. Well, it's better than knowing names of horses. Yes. I suppose that's what education's like. Knowing a lot of things that don't really matter. He paid me fair, Ma. He was in a stew when I heard to the say that fair was too bob, and me with only tenpence in my purse. I think he knew how I was fixed, because when I got all bothered, he smiled. You know the way he smiles, Ma. Well, he smiled like that and said he'd got tickets for us both and that it was all right. Oh, he said it different. He wouldn't have done that, Ma, if he hadn't... If he didn't... It was took for granted when I was a lass that when a lad paid for you to go places, he meant so much serious. I'm sorry I'm late, Mrs. Jack. I had a lot of business to attend to. Oh, well, come in and sit here down. Pull the blind down, Mrs. Ball. How's the rheumatics, Mrs. Ball? I'll be all right, but for a twinge now and again. Still, I should worry. There's a rare lot up at cemetery, but a lot of a twinge or two. Now then, all round the table, girls. Did I come in too? Why, of course, Dax. Bring your chair up and sit down. Not frightened, are you? Eh, no. Nothing like a talk with the dead to cheer yourselves up. Shh. You frighten the spirits away. Now, all hands on the table. Now, 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 only just your fingertips touching. Are there any spirits present here tonight? Answer three for yes and two for now. Has anyone anything to ask the spirits about? I have. Mrs. Nettle has a ticket in the Irish sweep. She wants me to go shares. Ask the spirits if I do go shares, will the ticket draw a horse? Will Mrs. Nettle's ticket draw an horse? Answer three for yes and two for now. No, it won't. No, right. She can keep her old ticket. Shh, I don't want to. Stop. Spirits don't like too much talking. Any more questions? Oh, I ask if Jack Tuttle's there. Is Jack Tuttle here tonight? Answer three for yes and two for now. He's here. Hey, are you there, Jack lad? How are you finding things up there? Is it anything like you thought it would be? Be careful, Mrs. Bull. Spirits don't like it to be too familiar. Listen to me, love. When I laid you out, I found half a crown in your pocket. I knew you wouldn't want it with ours gone, so I took it. I'm only telling you so you won't think I pinched it. Eh, hey, lad, God forgive me for saying it, but it took you a long time to go. Oh, well, now that's done it. Now the spirits have gone. I wonder who it could be at this time of night. You know, I'd have bought a share in Mrs. Nettle's ticket if the spirits had said it was going to draw a horse. <gasps> Fancy me winning 30,000 pounds. I'd buy myself a fur coat. Ah, and I'd be laying you out in a month, drunk to death, fur coat and all. I'd risk it. Oh, it's you, Mrs. Oldcastle. And Sally, too. <laughs> Blimey. Sit down. Hello, love. How are you, Mrs. Dorval? Ah, my cough is bad again. <laughs> well, I've just come to ease my conscience. But what's brought you here, lass? Have you come to have your fortune told? Well, well I... uh, we did wonder. Is it cards or tea leaves? Make it tea leaves. It's more exciting when you see things in the future the way you do. I don't know why I've come, Mrs. Bull. I don't believe in it. Ah, it's only a bit of fun, Sal, and it costs now. Yeah, it's just enough. Now, sit that. No, no, no. Turn it round three times. Now, upside down. Strike me pink, look at that. What? What is it? Money. Lots of money. And it's in it too. 
two weeks or two months or two years. But there's money. Ah, you're the bank. Hey, I do hope it all comes true. Oh, I don't like this here. Do you know a tall, dark man? Think hard, lass. Think hard. Whether you do or you don't, the leaves say there is one. Ain't your colouring, though. Be on your guard against him. He means danger. Tall or short, dark or fair, they're all the same if they haven't got any money. Will you hush, Mrs. Bull? Will you hush? Here he is. This is the bloke. I can see him. You're going to fall in love. Oh, this is all daft, this is. I'm going, and I'm sorry I came. I am sorry, Mrs. Jake. She's a strange lass as our Sal, and just as she was going to tell us somewhat about him, too. I don't mind her, Mrs. Jake. Tell me mine. I'll tell you, lass, and I'm no fortune teller. You'll keep on drawing your old age pension, then you'll die. I'll lay out, and poor house will bury you. I've got one with Rome, Jack. Who's one three o'clock? Uh, uh, Jack Dorr. That's two up. Have a look at 3.30. I've played all on T. Rose. Oh. It's on back page, stop press. He's let me down, you bet. It's one. You what? It's hey, one. What did you do? Here, go. Give me this. Yeah. I've got the treble home. Two twenty to one chances, all of the three to one. I oh, don't talk, Bill. Hey, you kidding? Here I am. Here, here, see for yourself. Boom. Hey, what's to do? Ariad Castle's got a treble home. Treble, bib. Hey, how much did he have on it? Threepence. What's the odds? Threepence on a twenty to one chance. All onto a twenty to one chance. All onto a three to one chance. Here, give me a pencil, oh, someone, quick. Pencil? Ah, yeah. I've got one. Here you are. Here. Yeah. Well, twenty out. times threepence. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's five and threepence, and then onto, a, onto another one. twenty to one. That's five pounds, ten and threepence. Uh, uh, five pounds, ten and threepence on a three to one. Five pounds, ten and threepence on a three to one. E flipping heck. That's twenty-two quid. For threepence. Twenty-two quid. Good old Harry. I hope Sam Grundy pays up. <laughs> the sky's the limit, William, so he says. Oh, twenty-two quid. <laughs> twenty-two quid! Gosh, do you think he's gonna pay me? But you're daft fool, you won't find out standing there. Come, come on, let's go. Let's let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Charlie, where's Sam Grundy? Come on, all right, all right, you get your money. You'll get your money. Where? Where is he? Where's the lucky fella? So you thought you'd break bank, eh, lad? Stand up alongside of me, son. You know, young fella, my lad, there are some bookies as has a limit. You know that, don't you? Ah, there are some fellas as calls themselves bookies, as it only pay a fiver on your bet and no more. But that ain't on his Sam Grundy. <laughs> now, you had a bet with me, didn't you? Now, how much was the bet? Speak up, Harry, my lad. There ain't not to be ashamed of. There's nobody here wouldn't give a ten pound note to be in your shoes, eh? <laughs> now, how much was the bet? Turn to crowd, lad. Turn to crowd. Threepence. And how much do you calculate to draw for your threepence? Twenty-two quid, Mr. Grundy. Now, Harry, my son, you can make more noise than that. Ladies and gents at back can't hear. Oh, now, I doubt with it. Twenty-two quid. Twenty-two quid for three pennies. How many bookies would pay out that much? How many, I say? Well, you all know Honey Sam's motto. Charlie. Harry, my lad, what's on his Sam's motto? Sky's the limit. <laughs> Charlie. Now, hold out your cap, lad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. There's only some for you. What can't speak can't lie. What about this steak money? <laughs> Billy. One, two, three. Ah, that's better. There you are, my lad. <laughs> hey, honey lad. Isn't that your sister, you Salad Castle? Ah. ah, well, don't forget to treat her. Give her a couple of quid out of your winnings to buy some new clothes. And tell her I said so. And think on. I'll ask her if you've done it next time I see her. Better go through the house. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Hey, all that money. It doesn't seem true. Hey, yeah, mother. Yeah, Dad. To be able to have a pint now. Al? No. No, I don't want it. Oh, go on, don't miss a daft. Look at it, all that money. I don't know what I'll do with it. What would you do, Dad? It's the hard money, son. If it doesn't go one way, it'll go another. You don't want to leave young once, lad, and you'll never have as much money as that again. Why not take that lass of thine away for holiday? Me and your ma only had one holiday in our lives, but eh, it was worth it. We've never forgotten it. It was worth it, eh, lass? Hey, go on, Billy Henry. Oh, well, father, did you hear her? She called you Henry. Hey, pa, why don't you kiss her? She's blushing. <laughs> ah, so lass, we had a champion time. Aye, it's as dad says, Harry. You spend your money on summit or other. Why, you've enough there to take you to Blackpool. Blackpool. Good job you didn't come last week. Raining cats and dogs all week. Here's one room. Married or single? We just started courting. Oh. Well, young lady, you better have this room. You can see it, see, if you stand on chair. Lovely view we had till one was put up their building. Well, I hope you'll be comfortable. Bathroom's at the end of the passage. I shall go out and make most of the sunshine if I need you. Here, Ellen. Oh, yeah, they... it... it's grand. Come on, let's go and have a look at your room. I say, Ellen. Honey, do be careful. Isn't it grand to be rich? Come on, let's go out.
fancy all this still being here when we've gone back. Don't remind me. Seems as though we've only just come. I thought living in this place seemed a dream. Now going back seems the dream. Going back. I'm gonna go back and leave all this behind. Oh, heck, it's a bit thick when you can't do what you want. All we'd want is a little cottage. If I could get a bit of a boat, I, I bet I could catch enough fish for us to live on. Just a room in a cottage would do. Wouldn't care how small the room was. I could get a bit of a gardener. I could grow things. Oh, what's the good of talking about it? Talking about what, though? Oh, Hanky Park, our home, and all of us that's got to live in it. I want to get away from it all, Addy. Would have done long ago if I could have found somebody that would take me in for what I'm earning. It's just sick to think about it. It's living here with all this clean bed and a room of me own. Knowing me ma and pa won't come home drunk every night. Me having to lie there and listen to it all. <laughs> Never mind, Ellen, love. It won't be like that forever. I love you, Ellen. I do love you, really. I and we'll be married as soon as I finish my apprenticeship. No, really, we will. No kidding. And I'll have finished it in a few months now. You'll always love me. Won't you, Harry? You know me? Somehow things don't seem so bad when I've got you. Crane of mine needs fixing again. You better see to it. The right muck you made of it last time. If there's anything wrong with the crane, you know it's put the complaint. It'll be passed on to me. And don't come the Rudy Sergeant Major stuff. You're not kidding a duty when you talk to me. You know what I mean. I know your game, and they don't kid me. What are you talking about, Ned? Come off it, come off it. And you know who I mean. You've been stuffing her up with that highfalutin talk of yon, and she swallows everything you say. Who are you referring to, Ned? Referring, referring. The edge you put on it makes me sick. Who the hell do you think you are? Don't you think you're making a bit of a fool of yourself? Listen to me. What are you going to do about it? You ain't making no move to marry her. Well, what's that got to do with you? Me? Me has asked her to marry me. Turning me down for a white-livered rat like you. If you don't want that dial of yawn smashed in, keep away from Salard Castle. You understand me? I mean it. If I were you, I'd consult Sal before you make any arrangements for her. You and your ruddy talk. You got it coming to you, say, help me. One of these days, you'll open that trap of yawn too much. Go on, Harry. What did Larry say? Try and remember. Oh, he just got on with his work. He wouldn't argue with him. Ned and Archie wasn't half angry. You don't like Ned, do you, Sal? Him? Ah, oh, he's a dirty pig. Him and Sam Grundy's a pair. Sam Grundy? Why? Why, he hasn't oh, been... Oh, he's always on to me, the fat pig. You've no need to work, Sal. You could have all you want. Ah, oh, you can do anything when you've got the dough. They say he's got women all over the place. That'll and... do, lad. I know all about it. I'd want so much to do to let a thing like him or Naki muck about with me. Aren't you and Larry going to get... I don't trust that Ned Naki. Get some beer inside of him, he'd do anything. Where's Larry, Jim? He's gone to see Labour Agent about meetings this weekend. Has he got another meeting tonight? No, no, we're finished for tonight. Ned Narky's not been here, has he? No, he's where he usually is, at Pub, I suppose. Shouldn't think Larry be very long. Oh, thanks, Jim. Hello, Sal. What about a little ride? Who with? Uh, what have you got against me? 
Well, he wanted you to come for a ride in the car. Oh, you're taking too many already. Listen, Sal. Oh, go on, take yourself for a ride. You make the street look untidy. Sally, what's the trouble? Oh, Larry, I'm so glad you've come. Our Addy was telling me what Narky said to you today. He heard it all. Oh, take the notice about him. He's out of patience with himself. He's a bad un. Let's not talk about him. It's just a song at twilight when the lights are low. Well, somebody's got something to sing about. Shadows, your father's been drinking again, eh? I wish you'd go home, Annie. I hate you to be about when they're carrying on like this. I'm not letting you go in till they're finished. Oh, it doesn't half make me sick to think you've got to go in there to sleep. Well, it isn't my fault, them going on like this. Never yeah, mind, Ellen. I'll be out of this as soon as I finish my apprenticeship. I'll finish it on Friday, and then I'm going to get a job on full pay. I think you will. Eh? I mean, I hope it won't be too long before you do, Ali. Oh, don't you worry. I'll have one in a day or two, and then we can start saving up. And... But what you afraid of? Don't you worry. I... <laughs> Tower Blackpool. What do you keep it for? I know. Daft thing. Well, let's go home, Sal. I hate standing about back alleys. There's no need for us to be standing about back alleys. Not if you don't want. Let's not kid one another, Sal. We both want the same thing. But you know my idea is 45 bob a week. What a wage to build the future on. And look at Marlowe's. We none of us know when we're going to finish. See, what can I offer you? You do love me, don't you, Larry? Why do you ask that, Sal, you know? Well, then, let's get married. I can still go on working so as we can have more money. Oh, Larry, I'd do out for you. I know you would, Sal. But it's this place. We can't ever get away from it. We'd go on and on, but it would get us in the end. It gets everybody in the end. But you can't have everything. We not only can't, but we don't. It's wanting decent things and knowing they'll never be yours. Dreaming about things you can't have don't get you anywhere. Does it, Larry? Besides, it isn't where you live. It's who you live with. Well, then, Sal, we'll have to start saving up. That's if you can wait. Worry so, Ari. You knew you'd have to finish at Marlowe's when you came out of your apprenticeship, didn't you? Oh, it'll be better for us both now, and you can get a job on full pay. Aye, but I've been out for more than three weeks now. Been around Trafford Park and all over the place. They don't want nobody. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, you don't expect to walk into a job straight away. Poor, you haven't been out to work any time yet. You'll get one soon. Do you think so? Of course you will. You see. 
I hope you're right. Uh, won't it be grand for us both when I do? It's only half pay. But if you can't find me a job, I wish you could make Helen see us like it won't be for long. I mean, if I don't get a job today, oh, God, let me get one soon. What we rain and all this year unemployment, I don't know what we do without a spark of fire. Oh, you've now to grumble at. What ails you now? Well, look at table, full of pawn tickets. You had a quarter as many customers a year ago. Oh, things is bad, that's why. But thank the Lord, unemployment or not, they can't touch me old age pension. That don't go on short time. And what a crowd there is at the pawn shop these days. Queue halfway up the street. Just like it might be a football match. Times is bad. More fool people for worrying. Well, it's not like worry for popping people off. And that'll be no ill wind for thee, charging like you do for laying folks out. Oh, you're a nice one to talk about charging, you old... Who's that? Don't stand in perishing cold. Come in. Hey, what are you doing out at this time of night, love? I've only come for... Add to form my wedding ring. He doesn't know it's a brass and I'm wearing. He'd murder me if he knew I'd been to pawn shop with it, so Mrs. Nattle took it for me. And I've come for it. There it is. You wanted half a crown on ring, but only asked for two and five. You see, if I got you half a crown, you'd have had threepence interest to find. But being as it's under half a crown, it can only charge you a penny. So two and five, with a penny for pawn ticket and two for me trouble, leaves two and two. There you are, Les. Now, what about money on lad's suit? Well, you see, our dad's finished at pit till further notice. And our Harry hasn't found a job yet. It's getting on for nine months since he was out. No sign. I don't know what we'd do if it weren't for ourselves, bit. Damn the weekly payments. You'll put money in your belly, lass, and make them wait. Take no notice of her. You wouldn't like your husband to get a summons, would you now? Nay. You'd better take a shilling. How's your cell, Mrs. Hardcastle? You know, they're getting wed in a fortnight, though they want it kept a secret. Well, I am pleased. What did I tell you? A wedding in the street, girls. Did you ever? Oh, the weddings today. They're not like the weddings we had when I was a girl. There was free porter and dancing and singing in the streets from dusk till dawn. Aye, Larry's a champion lad, and that lass of yours is lucky to have got him. Oh, he's not of the strongest, though, and he ought to look after his health a bit more. All this politicianising in all sorts of weather. And what's happened with all this talk? Talk, all talk. I used to vote for them that gave the most coal and blankets. Ah, uh, there's none of that now. Yeah, you old scotch, you'd sell your soul for a load of coal, some of you. Make me sick. Educated and well-read fellas like Larry Mee, talking till they're blue in the face, and you... Ah, you give me the bellyache. I never bother me head about what doesn't concern me. I don't understand anything about politics, but I do understand a load of coal. Well, boys, I told you, you can expect nothing else until you start thinking for yourselves. You've got to wait a long time. They've got now to think with. Well, I still say you can't do without capital. Well, we don't want to do without capital. All I'm saying is that it shouldn't be used only as a means of making profit. Hey, that's a lot of rot. If we don't make profit, place it closed down. Without money, you're sunk. Do you know what money is? Uh, of course I know what money is. Well, what is it? Well, money... Hey, that's a daft question. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody knows what money is. He doesn't know the gormless fool. Ah, shut up, Jim. Now, look. 
Pounds, shillings, and pence. Now, that's what they give you in wages. Now, when you get your wages, what do you do with it? What do they do with it? Ah. Well, they spend it. On what? Well, they ought to know. They spend it on things they want. Ah, that's the point. So, therefore, you don't work for money, but for the things you want, don't you? Ah, if I like to put it that way. Ah, see, so money in itself is no use, is it? I mean, you can't eat it or wear it or anything. If there was nothing to buy, it wouldn't be any use. If there weren't, no, but, but there is. Ah, that's true, but remember, that's because people like you and I, the working people, make the things. Ah, well, they can't do without capital. Ah, oh, you silly daft crackpot. Where's oh, your blasted brain? Shut, shut up, Jim. Look, I'm not suggesting we can do without capital. All I'm trying to do is show you what capital is. Aye, but trade's bad here and the world over. And talking about it won't get us nowhere. Yes, that's quite right. It's the same all over the world. The wheels are coming to a standstill, and for why? You want to know why? Aye. Oh, because men are afraid of each other. Hey, mother is off again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I shall go on until we do something. Millions of men in this country want work. Millions of men in other countries are in the same boat, too. You can think of it, if you like, like a huge dam that's already beginning to crack. And next year, or the year after, or in ten years' time, perhaps, there'll be a catastrophe. You see, that's the way of the world and nature. It takes a disaster to waken people. But life will go on. What we've got to remember is that human conditions are not beyond human control. I said that man has made these conditions. Well, he can remake them. Aye, and rebuild a new and better world. As soon as he's got the real desire in his heart. But I still say they can't do well capital. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your trap shut. No, well, shut up. Like Aye, you're not in time office at Marlowe's now, you know. Leave the kids alone, man. Get on with the game. <laughs> oh, I've missed you. you Serves him right. <laughs> Yeah, hold this. Give us a drag, Harry. Head over here a minute. Get some pop, Harry. No, you took it away in a minute. Ha, ah, missed. Oh, Hard right. lines, oh, Harry. Oh, Need an Harry. Save a drag for us. Here, oh, come on, come on, come on. Share and share alike. Yeah, have one of these. Oh, where did you get those from? Wouldn't you like to know? Go on, have one. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. How about you, Sam? Thanks, Bill. Tom? You're getting out working for it on us, do you, Charlie? You ought to know. What did you get out of it? <laughs> That's what I say, Charlie. That's what I say. You want to try working dodges for a change, like me. Don't talk to me of honest work. Add some. Served me apprenticeship to engineering like all you kids. Got the push when I was 21 because I wanted full money. You remember me, don't you? It was lads like you what done me out of my job. Months I was looking for work till I got tired of being pushed around. <laughs> then I got wise. You mean you got six months? So what? I got six months. Look at me now. Sitting pretty. I've been in quad, you know. I'm a jailbird. Six months I got for half inching out of a gas meter. And who was waiting for me when I come out to clink? Ask me. Probation officer wanted to reform me. So he got me a job, 12 hours a day, 30 bob a week, cleaning out of public convenience. You know the kind of job. All head work and tips. <laughs> Aye. And you know what I told him he could do with it? So I told you. I got wise, started working dodges. And now I'm with Sam Grundy. And the only time I take my coat off is when I play a game of pills. Yeah, and another thing. Because I've been in clink, they won't have me in the army when there's another war. <laughs> That's the kind of mug I am. There you are. I told you. But where did you get those fags? I'll let you in on it. Sick I was of picking up fag ends. 
Blast everything, I don't care. Well, can't we go and get some more now? Don't be a fool, you've got to wait till it's dark. You come with me and I'll show you. Are you game? What about you, Jack? Nah, I don't want to go to jail. Yeah, windy. What about you, Sam? Not likely. Count me out. What to say, Harry? Not doing. Why not? I have enough on my mind as it is. <laughs> Take no notice of him. He can think of nothing but that there girl of his. And you keep your trap shut, I'll fill it for you. I'm going. So long, Harry. Don't let him get you down, lad. what they're going to do. There's too many at her house as it is. And I don't know what Dad will say. Oh, I wonder. When we're married, they could come and live with us, couldn't they? Oh, I'm so happy, Larry. I've never been so happy in my life. Just fancy we'll be wed by the end of the month. And it won't be a bad house. Not when I've cleaned it up a bit. Will it, Larry? Oh, you don't know what it means to me, Larry. A house of my own. I'll scrub it from top to bottom. There won't be a bug left in it when I've finished with it. Not a one. We'll have to wait a while for the bits and pieces, but mm, parlor will look all right. What with your books and that walnut table we paid deposit on. Oh, Larry. Hi, what's the matter with you? There's nothing wrong, is there? No, of course not. Now listen to me, Larry Meath. There's something hurting you. What is it? We'll have to put it off for a while, Sal. What did you say? I've lost my job. They gave me the sack yesterday. They gave you the sack? Oh, Larry. Oh, but you'll get another job. Uh, I won't. There are too many out as it is. But why can't we be married as we said? There's nothing to stop us. You get your doll and I'm working. No, no, Sal, I couldn't do that. But, Larry, there's nothing for me to live for without you. You don't know what I'd do for you. Listen, I'll come and live with you. Who oh, wants to get married? Who cares what folks say? No, it's no good, Sal. I couldn't sponge on you. What do you take me for? Don't talk like that. Is that all you care for me? Oh, why don't some of those pals of yours on council that are always making a mug out of you find a job for you? They're all right, they are. They don't give a damn for us. They've all landed fine jobs for themselves. And I... Oh, I'm sorry, Larry. Anyway, I've still got you. They can take away our jobs. But they can't take away our love. Can they? up other people. It's been explained to you. That's the position. There's nothing for you. What do you mean? There's no for me. I've paid my money in and I'm out of work, aren't I? It's no use arguing. It isn't my fault, is it? You've a couple of sons living with you or working, haven't you? Aye. One's earning 25 shillings a week and t'other two quid when they work a full week. And my eldest lad, 
He's going to get me. I'm very sorry, but the means test committee have ruled that there's sufficient money coming into your house for your family to keep you. Swine. My eldest lad's going to get wed. Has he to keep me and my old woman? Never in your life. May as well turn us out into the street and have done with it. Who's going to keep us? Where's the food coming from? I'm oh, afraid that's your lookout. Oh, no, it's my lookout. Right, Lino, it's right. bad enough being out of work and let alone no Come, lad. I paid me money in regular. Regular. I've never had a complaint against me. Now, it's no good your waiting. I've told you before there's nothing for you. You've been knocked off dole. Your father's drawing unemployment benefit and your sister's working. There's no appeal. Stand by and see why the kids go hungry, then the ruddy will mistake him. Aye, and if they can't find us a job, let them damn well keep us till they do. What the devil are we standing here for, chewing the rag about? What are we going to do about it? Aye, come on, all of you. There's a big meeting on down at Arches. Aye, come on. And who told you about these government economies? Who warned you what was coming? Government economies, eh? And who do they start economizing on? Who have they started economizing on? On you! Aye, ah. ah, the fellas that can least afford it. And when they start economizing on you, they're robbing your wives and kids of their bread. Yes. Well, what are you going to do about it? I'll tell you what we can do about it. Now, you listen to me. You've got enough of this hot air. Now, let's get on to cases. We all know what should have been done and what we'd like to have done. You had a chance for that in the last general election. But what you decided then has made these conditions. You're all living in a democracy. You're the people who made this means test law. And now you're behaving like a pack of children just because it doesn't suit you. What's your idea? Don't let him kid you. We've made our minds up what we're going to do. If you think I'm going to encourage you to follow this horrid maniac, you're mistaken. Now, I tell you what's been arranged. The mayor has agreed to receive a deputation of six. The protest procession can be held as long as we keep off the main roads. Now, the procession leaders know what route to be taken. And remember, the police have got their jobs to do just the same as we've got ours. We not only don't anticipate any trouble, there's not going to be any trouble. Cow time to the boss class as usual, Larry Meath. And in both with them, that's what you are. Yeah. Listen to you, I'm fed up to the teeth of your blasted blather. We are going up Main Street. We're not afraid of the police if you are. Yeah. Afraid? Of course I'm afraid, you fool. What chance has a half-stabbed mob like us got against them? Uh, next thing you'll be asking is to make a collection for them. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, lads, let's get out of here. Hey, lads, you best be careful. They're in a nasty frame of mind. Oh, that's all right, Jim. We can look after ourselves. Well, if you'll take my tip, you'll have now to do it. They're looking for trouble. Well, that's what we've got to avoid. If there's any trouble, it'll spoil our case. Come on, Jim. Let's go. Men have started to march. Send a further detachment to Clarence Road and remember, do not contact unless the position looks serious. We don't move unless they try to come through here. Look at them, lads. Think they can stop us. Come on. Two arches and onto the main road. Now then, you know the way to go. Why can't we go down the main road? Because you're going down there. Hear what he says, lads? We can't go down our own roads now. Ah, oh, come on, boys. We can't go this way. You agreed on the route you take? You white-livered rotten rats. Now's your chance, you'll follow us. We're not going to let a ruddy policeman stop us.
listening to them shouting. No, they've lost the door. Get them lined up. I'm not going to lead them into trouble. Uh. Nay, lad, rest. Oh, Larry, Larry, why are you always fighting other people's battles when you've yourself to think of? And me? Myself. I can't go on alone. Then why do you try? Oh, you don't understand, Sally. That's what's caused all this. Every man out for himself, and let everybody else look after themselves. That's what's wrong with the whole world. I know, lad, I know. A little effort from everybody. That's all. A new start, sir. So quiet and peaceful with me. Larry. Larry. I think it's a sin and a shame I do. Fifteen shillings for all the lads' belongings. Barefaced daylight robbery, that's what it is. Buying isn't selling, Mrs. Bull. Do you remember me lodger, Mrs. Nettle? Which one? You know, him I had insured for twelve pounds ten. Well, what about him? Well, he had a harmonium. Eight pounds ten he gave for it. He got in a gentleman's residence, second hand. Well, he couldn't play on the thing himself, and he kept it locked up so that nobody else could have a go. Well, Ten shillings was all they gave me for it when he died. Ten shillings, and it never played on. <gasps> the poor fella turning in his grave if he knew. Yeah, talking about graves, what do you think? Sally isn't having him buried. Not buried? What's she going to do with him then? He's to be burnt up, created or some such word. She says he says it's the proper way. Well, did you ever? That's the first time that's happened in these parts. Give me a grave proper and Christian-like. I was brought up to read me Bible, so I was. No, I haven't always been what I should have been in my time. But if that's what them there socialist fellas believe in, they ain't getting my vote. Huh. Nobody's gonna burn me. Not if I know it. It's not everything that'll burn. <laughs> it's going to cost Sally a tidy penny, this crematorium business, isn't it? How much did she have men for? He was never in for nothing. He didn't believe in insurance. Well, how's she gonna get the money to do all this highfalutin' burying, then? That's what I want to know. That's none of your business. Have you got a drop of something in the house, Mrs. Nuttle? Mm. As though I need ask. Oh, yes, come on. Let's drink the poor lad's health. <laughs> Albert. Tell Sam Grundy I want him, will you? Sam Grundy? Okay. I'm telling you, it's the one that came in last. Mr. Grundy. Hey. Sir Lightcastle wanted to see the outside. Sir Lightcastle? Hi. See me? You sure? Aye, that's what you said. What's up, sir? What do you want? I was going to ask you to lend me five quid, but I'm not so sure I want your help now. Why, sir? What do you mean? I don't like the company you keep. Company I keep? What do you mean? Those pals of yours. Ah, they're no pals of mine, nor none of their kidney, neither. Well, you seem to be enjoying their company. Come on, Sal, take a ride around in my car. We don't want to talk here where everyone can hear. 
I came to borrow five quid and I don't mind who hears it. I don't want no drives in cars. Will you lend it? I'll pay you back when mill starts at full time again. Yes, Al. Help yourself. You sure that's enough? And you've no call to pay me back? You may as well know that if I could have borrowed it from someone else, I would. And I'll pay it back. Oh, Sal, what's up with you? I don't want you to pay it back. Come on. Take it. Take it all. And more, if you like, and don't be daft. God, Sal, you've got me all wrong. I'm not trying tricks on with you. Well, I, I'd just like to have you for a pal. You must be sick of having not to wear and pinching and scraping week after week. Fly me and the things you could have if you wanted. Anything, Sal. Anything for the asking. So you see that I'll have to marry Ellen. What's that you say? I said I'll have to get married. And I thought like that we could come and live here and get a bed in back room with Sal until I get a job like. You blasted young fool. Now, Henry. You you get wed. Who the devil do you think's gonna keep you? Thought like that. You yeah, thought, yeah, you gormless fool. Don't you think there's enough trouble here without you bringing more? Well, I'm not going to have a slut like that to this house. Hey, I won't have you call her a slut to you. Leave her name out of it. Are you threatening me? Well, I am if you call her names. I'm asking you for an out. I'm not the only one out of work in this house, remember? Yeah, you, you tricked me as though I was a kid just because I've gotten out of out of collar. You didn't do like that when I was sharing my winnings with you, did you? Once let me get hold of some money again and I'll ne'er part with a penny. I'm supposed to be a man, I am. Well, look at me. Aye, and if there was another war, I'd be a man. I'd be a ruddy hero. Yeah, bring no wife here, understand? Go live with her, folks, the low lot they are. Stop it! I don't want to live here, do you? I wouldn't live here if I got the chance. You can go to hell. I'm leaving. What did he say, Harry? Will he let us? No, and I've left home. All he could say was that it was damn fools. That he couldn't keep us. Oh, come on. Who wants to live there anyway? It'll be a long time before he sees me again. But who will take us in? We've got nothing except what I'm earning, and I'll be confined any day now. No room at our house. What'll become of us? If only I had known this was going to happen. Oh, quiet down, Ellen, will you? You'll have everybody looking at us. Now, you leave it to me. Everything will be all right. I'll find a place for us somewhere. I'll I'll join the army before I'll be beat. By gum, see if I don't. Besides, when we're married, there'll be bound to give us money at work out, and I stand a better chance of getting a job being married. Single blokes don't get a smelling. I'm glad it's happened the way it has. We'll be together, and that's what I've always wanted. Just let me get hold of a job a little, and I'll show you. You'll go shorter now, so help me. Honey, if only you could get a job, I wouldn't care nothing for nobody. Oh, it'll come. You see if it won't. You never know what's in store for us. Just imagine it, Helen. I've only to get a job and... He... A job. Well, I'm telling you. Any more lip out of you and I'll beat you good looking. I don't know what the word is coming to. Look at that, for God's sake. <laughs> How is your poor old cough, Lavi? Ah, uh, just as usual. It's not doing me any good. Well, thank the Lord we spare all of that. Aye, ah, vermin and all. Yes, but how's young Harry Hardcastle going to pay your rent and eyes off the dowel? She's only earning 15 shillings a week at the mill when she gets a full week in. <laughs> Just got married in time, they did. Mm, that's what comes of sitting on Darnie's Hill and going for holidays together. <laughs> I'd like to see the fellow that get me on the top of Darnie's Hill. <laughs> oh, I bet you would. That could be a job for you, dearie, when she's confined. Well... Accidents will happen. <laughs> it's one way of getting your bloke. I suppose they'll go to their Sally and ask her for a bit of help. I heard of a party what saw a little piece of business being done between her and a certain person. Gave her a bundle of notes, he did. Very nice, I must say. I'll pay you back, she says to him when she saw the other party passing. Hmm. As though we don't know how she'll pay him back. And I wouldn't blame her. From what I can see, a wedlock is now but scratching and scraping week after week, trying to make ends meet. Crikey, they think we're blooming magicians. And I'm not so sure we're not. Nice goings on amongst your own neighbours, I must say. Very nice indeed. And in what she was supposed to have married, not buried a month. You leave that ass alone. If you want to know, it was me that put her up to ask Sam Grundy for the money to pay for Larry Mee's funeral. Now are you satisfied? 
All the same, he'll be getting his way with her. Hi, Sal! He's your boyfriend, Sal. Oh, he's no friend of mine. I'll give him a mouthful if he doesn't leave me alone. I'm sick of him pestering me. Hello, Sal. Where have you been hiding all week? Uh, what do you want? If it's the money, you'll have to wait. I've said I'd pay you back. Ah, oh, Sal, it's not that. I told you I didn't want it back. I wanted you to come to pictures. Just something to cheer you up. I can cheer myself up. You may as well know you're wasting your time chasing around after me. I told you plain and straight when I borrowed the money from you that if I could have got it off somebody else, I would. I want nothing out of you, Sal. Honest, help me. Then leave me alone. All as I wanted was to offer you a job. Aye, what kind of a job? Being me housekeeper. At that house of mine up in Wales, have a grand time, Sal. Nothing more to worry about. Everything will be fair and square and above board. I've told you, you're wasting your time. What's the matter, Harry? It's Ellen. She's, she's been took bad. She's asking for you. Come on, quick. Get in car, Sal. Take you both there in a couple of shakes. <sighs> but, Sal, Ellen's... Oh, come on, then. Thank you. I'll be waiting, Sal. You sling your hook, Harry. Yarn wanted in there. Ah, there's no to worry about, lad. It's all over. Aye, mm -hmm. it's a girl, Harry. What does it feel like to be a father? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 what's going on here? This isn't Liberty Hall. Hey, yes, proud father. Oh, I want a word with you, young fellow, my lad. Come on in. But you can't just turn us out the street like that, Mrs. Stokes. I don't want to turn anybody out, Darren. But I'm only a poor widow woman. I have to live on ten shillings a week. That's my old age pension. You can't expect me to be charitable on that, can you? No, I'll have to get a lodger that can pay his rent regular. And you'll have to go somewhere else, now that the baby is born. Where can we go? What can we do? We'll be all right when Ellen's up and starts work again. Well, that'll be some time yet. And another thing, who's going to look after the child when she does get work? Don't think I'm going to turn nursemaid in my time of life because I'm not. I had enough of that with my own family, but thank the Lord they're all grown up and out of my sight. I wouldn't have the trouble of them again, not for a king's ransom. And another thing, young man, it's you that ought to be working and not your wife. I, I know, but nobody will give me a job. Don't tell me that. Your Sally could help you if she wasn't so stuck up. Sam Grundy will give you a job and your dad too. If Sally you do what Grundy wants, but she won't, no. She's a heartless hussy. Nay, you leave our Sally alone. I want nothing to say to her. I'm only telling you you'll have to get out, that's all. A new start. That's what I want. A new start. You must be sick of having not to wear and pinching and scraping week after week. Blimey and the things you could have if you wanted. Anything, Sal. Anything for the asking. Everything all right, Sal? with your woman, the fuss you make. I reckon she might have gone farther and fared worse. Aye, but it's her father. He'll murder her when he finds out I know him. He'll think it's such a disgrace. Everybody will be talking. Ah, talk's cheap. Look here, lass. Sally will take no hurt. She's not that kind. I don't like it. We've always been respectable. <laughs> so was I. Only because I never had a chance to be out else, and don't you forget it. Look here, Mrs. Hardcastle. If I had me time to come over again, I'd never turn my nose up at a fat belly, so long as it had a gold watch chain on it. You can wait. I won't be long.
Hello, Mrs. Bull. Hello, Ma. Oh, you've no need to go, Mrs. Bull. I suppose the old street knows my business by this time. Well, I'm not ashamed. You'd be a damn fool if you was. Ah, uh, lass, when you get as old as me, you'll have learnt there's not worth worrying about, except where your next meal's coming from. By gum, you will. Have you got a taxi waiting outside? Aye, why not? Eh, Sal, in front of all neighbours. Have you no feeling from shame? Your shame? I like that, Ma. I thought it was my shame the old trouble was about. Eh, Sal, you've changed. You're odd. Aye, I'm odd. And by gosh of a need to be. Seems to me things always turn out different to what you expect. I thought I'd have been married by now. Married? <laughs> you've not missed much by missing that. You marry for love and find you've let yourself in for a seven day a week job with no pay. And you don't find it out till it's too late. Well, that's not for me. I'd best go and get me things. Hey, I don't know what's come over her. She isn't the same girl. You're right. And none but a fool would expect her to be. What's the matter with you, lass? I'm scared of what her dad's going to say. What'll become of her? Isn't that just the way of the world? Your daughter has a settlement made on her, and there's you wondering what's going to become of her. Why don't you ask what's going to become of us? Well, you won't be wanting company, so I'll be going. You didn't... you didn't get that job then, Henry? Job? <laughs> Whose is them? Your Sally. She's here now? Aye, she's upstairs getting her things. Now, don't lose your temper. Well? What are these tales I've been hearing about thee and Sam Grundy? What about them? Have you got the cheek to stand there and tell me they're true? Yes. Nay, sorry, love, don't. It's true, Mother, and I don't care who knows it. And I'll tell thee somewhat else. It's sick I am a cudgeon old clothes to try and make them look somewhat like. And it's sick I am a working week after week and seeing out for it. And it's sick I am of never having naught but what's been in pawn shop and crawling with dirt and vermin. I'm sick of the sight of Anki Park Eye and everybody in it. Don't. So you go on the loose, would you? And make respectable folks like me and your mother the talk of the neighborhood. Damn you, you're not fit to be a daughter of mine. Yeah, who cares what folks say? There's none I know as wouldn't change places with me if they had the chance. You'd have me wed, would you? Well, tell me where's fellow around here as can afford it. Them as is working aren't able to keep themselves, never mind a wife. Look at yourself. And look at our Harry. On workers' relief and hasn't even got a bed he can call his own. Well, can you get our Harry a job? No, but I can. I've got influence now, but I'm not respectable. Get out. Get out before I kill you. Right, and I can do that too. You turned our Harry out because he got married. You're turning me out because I'm not. You'd have me like all the rest of the women, working themselves to death and seeing out for it. Look at Mother. Look at her. Well, there isn't a man breathing now that he's gone as can get me like that for him. You brazen slut. Keep your line to Matthew, Mother, do you hear? Father, Father, look what you've done. Keep away from her. Keep away from her, do you hear? Yeah, lass, don't cry. Don't cry. You neither of you know what you're saying when you get that way. I've been a slave all my life to keep her home for her. And I kept respectable for her, and God knows I've nearly been driven to drink with things. And now my own daughter tells me she's gone on the loose. I'm proud of it. Lad, she's only young. She's only young. And where would we have been these past months if it hadn't been for ourselves? Oh, leave me be. Leave me be. I'm sick of it all. Oh, God, give me some work. Give me some work. That's for Dad. 
there's one for our Harry there, too. Tell him to take it to manager a bus company. That'll be a job for them both. Remember, they must say nothing to nobody about how they got them. Oh, I'm sorry about this, Dad. Things are different now to what we've been used to. We got to face things as they are, not as we'd like them to be. Larry was right. We all want a fresh start. Well, I found there's no start in fresh in Anki Park, so I'm getting out quickest road. Maybe that's a good job. Nay, don't take on so, Henry. Can't you see? She only done it for us. It was the only way she knew. I done my best. I done my best. Aye, lad. And that's all that any of us can do. But things can't go on like this forever, Henry. One day we'll all be wanted. The men who've forgotten how to work, and the young ones who've never had a job. People will begin to see what's been happening. And once they do, there'll not be no Anki Park. No more.